Okay, hi all, Tapani here. Welcome. Um, I just want to say something before we get started. Did you know that at the tip of the rock there is freedom? And the way to get there, so easy. You know the way to get there? Love. Okay, so today is um, November the 18th and um, I wanted to just clear something up. This video is not going to be um, very long, you guys, because um, I, I have some other things, other topics that I want to talk about that I will come back to later. First off, um, starting this off, I want to say um, thank you. Um, to a couple of people because um, right now what I'm going to be talking about um, to, to uh, tell you what's going on I'm going to be talking about Scientology that's right I'm not going to call it the church of Scientology because like I told Tony Tony Ortega that's their main problem they're calling themselves a church and they're totally not a church okay so um okay so basically because of talking about that um uh, because I came out on YouTube and I said that, you know, hey, you know, hey world, you know, I don't work for the Church of Scientology anymore. Tony Ortega contacted me and wanted to interview me. I interviewed with him. Um, he asked me some questions and I said some things. So I had people um, leaving comments and saying things about it. And it was wonderful. I love to hear everything everyone has to say. You know, I really do because it helps it helps you grow you know and um, so one of the things that I um, was talking about in this interview I see that they made another post um, concerning something that I said so that's what I'm going to address today but like I said I wanted to say thank you very much to uh, Mr. Tony Ortega he's a wonderful guy he's really cool I didn't get to really meet him in person we talked on the phone we interviewed we you know and that was about it but he's a wonderful person also, by doing that interview with um, Mr. Ortega, I also uh, was befriended by uh, another um, beautiful lady, okay, and her name is Karen. Um, and so with these, you know, uh, with these two people, I've been being more, uh, getting more data, okay, uh, about what's been going on in the Church of Scientology. Like I said, I'm not a dummy. I wasn't totally ignorant going into it, you know. Um, I know everything that you commit yourself to as far as um, in any religion, you have to, uh, there's going to be restrictions, there's going to be things that are going to uh, control you because that's what religion is, it's about controlling someone to move in line the way this, the, the founder or the original person of this belief, this religion uh their ideals of how ethics or how you should behave so they're going to have these standards so i already knew that was going to happen um and like i said beside from that like years ago i had heard things about the, the church of scientology but you know they never got in in depth and i never take anything for just for what somebody says i'm always a person that i have to experience it for myself i don't feel like you can be a good judge of anything just by hearing about something if it's something that you're really interested in doing then I think you better get your ass out there and do it so you'll know if that's something that you really want to do okay all right guys I like to get comfortable I'm sorry Ugh. okay so anyway just to uh, clear that up that's what's that's what I'm gonna be talking about right now on this video okay so this is I I have it on my phone here you ain't gonna be able to see it it's like the glowing hand <laughs> okay um if you hear any music in the background music does not belong to me and for more information see the artist's websites okay all right so from now on i'll probably say that at the beginning if i have any music in the background this is my music which i'm trying to put on here next okay so anyway this story was um from the wonderful woman karen de la Carrier or Carrier, I I gotta figure out how to say it anyway. If I mess your name up, sweetie, I'm so sorry. People mess my name up all the time, but I'm truly not trying to be disrespectful. Okay, so anyway, this one is about um 
a wonderful woman. Her name is Kelly Jordan, and she tells her story about um, the horror show of abuse. And so I read through the story. I'm not going to read it to you again. I, I advise you, if you really want to know about this, to go um, go and check out uh, Scientology Invasion of the Black Community on Facebook, and you'll be able to read the story for yourself, okay? So I'll just make it, basically tell you. It's just telling you about how um, the, the Church of Scientology, how you get to certain levels and how they, you know, really just you have you there for your money even when you're on staff you know you're made to work like a slave you work all these many many hours and they pay you like they pay people in jail okay that's basically what they do you know people go to jail and say oh i just got my paycheck they don't work long hard hours for the weekend they might get 50 bucks okay so basically that's their pay and theirs is like seven days a week okay and at the end of the week you, you you get some like just a very bit little bit of change so um that's what she was talking about and that was one of the reasons not the main reason that i left okay but one of the reasons is i felt like you're calling yourself a church but you're trying to conduct as a business employer at the same time but yet and still you don't pay even minimum wage i thought that was illegal i thought you know when they passed that law about uh minimum wage that included everyone you know church is not excluded just because they're using a certain uh uh you know um uh, i don't know how to like one of the 501 or one of these Things that help a nonprofit organization or a religious organization be able to function without having to go by the regular standards of an average business. And that's basically what they did. And they figured out a way to get around that uh, really, really good, you know. But I still, it's unethical, you know, to me to call themselves a business. Uh, but I mean, a church, you know, they are a business, definitely. But then they're a legal business to me. That's I guess that's why they got in trouble with the IRS. But I don't want to go into that because I want to get back to the story. So anyway, she's talking about that and how she was in the mission and um, how, you know, they you know how they treated you. She was talking about the abuse. Now, the abuse part is, you know, people might take that as uh, is not physical. It's more mental and emotional abuse. You know, they first build you up and tell you you're this wonderful, wonderful person. But then uh, if you're not up to their standards, then you're the worst person in the world. You're suppressive. You're the cause of all the problems around everyone and yourself, you know, which truthfully, our problems do stem from us. They actually do because we allow these things to happen. The choices that we make have uh, circumstances, you know, cause and effect. It's all the same thing. But we uh, we are most of the time we are cause. We need to be effect. You, need, you know what I'm saying? You have to have some balance and stuff. So basically that part is true. But the way in which that they do it is abusive. OK, um, so she's basically talking about that. Now, here's my point, and I'm gonna, about to close it up because I have been talking. The point here that she says, and that um, if you go on my Facebook page, you'll see that I did, you know, quote it to let you know what was going on. Now, Tony asked me, you know, because um, I said a statement about I didn't, I was skeptical about joining because I have a problem with any religion. Okay. And I said that, and then um, I said the reason I was there is because it was. So I was looking for something. I was trying to see if they could get me to where I know that I can be, you know, into these levels. They call them OT levels, operating Thetan. Uh, Thetan, just another word for God, spirit, soul. It's all the same. Um, but you get to these levels where you know that you're God and you can control your universe. And that stuff sounds crazy, but it's actually true. So I knew about this stuff before being in Scientology. So I was in there for that. So I wanted to get to these levels to see how they do it so I can teach it to somebody. Because the way I got there, I can teach it. But I wanted to see how they do. I need to know. I can't just go by what someone says. I need to know for myself. And so anyway, um, one of the reasons that I left is because I was trying to get to these levels. 
And I was trying to do it without paying all these ridiculous amounts of money that they're asking just to get this uh, data. And um, one thing she says here, um, because I, I kept telling them, I, you know, even in muster, I, you know, I even stood up and I said, hey, I'm trying to get up that bridge. You know, I want to get up there. I know what you're talking about is up there. I want to get up there. I want to see how you get up there. This is my whole goal. I want to get up the bridge. So I see right here um, that Kelly was stating, um, I, um, Tony asked her, um, let me see here. He says, how high on the bridge did you get? Okay. And she said, basically, that's a joke. <laughs> you know, she said that she only got uh, ARC straight wire, which is ARC is, you know, affinity, reality, communications, the triangle. You know, it's really very important in doing anything and getting anywhere because still you have this pyramid, which is also the mountain, which is also the symbol that you see a lot of times in within the Scientology. It represents the the stages of Dianetics, uh, dynamics in your life, you know, the levels of it. So that when you get a break in that, you know, you have to go through streamlining, you go to these sessions and stuff they put you through and everything so that's you know what they were talking about there but um and then she said and student hat on the training uh side and she said that is as far as she had gotten in 14 years I was like there's a reason there's my true reason uh, uh, one of the true reasons for me leaving is because I told them that because I could see that I'm trying to get somewhere but you guys are trying to make it so difficult when it's super easy you're trying to make it difficult just to hold back the time and and hold someone back and I had an issue with that it's like don't why do you keep doing this oh every little thing do this again do it again just because you're trying to keep me from getting somewhere don't tell me you're trying to do it because you want to make sure I understand because you test me. I have to be, I have to get in board. You, you put us on the meter to see if there's anything that we don't fully understand. So those e-meters tell you, my flow needle tells you, no, there's nothing there that I don't fully understand. I got it. So if I got it the first time, why are you telling me that I need to do it again? It seems to me that it's just a delay to keep you in there. And if I had been paying, they would have been getting money from me because I could be paying for it. You see what I'm saying? That was a reason. That was a joke. I wasn't going to get anywhere on the bridge unless I was going to cough up these, uh, right here, one of the quotes, $100,000, $40,000. That was the only way I was going to get there. So they were basically going to just use me for what I had. Because I don't have the money, they were just going to use my skills and exploit my skills for their purposes. You know, with the steady promise of, well, you'll get some money knowing that in the org that I was at, there's no money coming in there. They're, they're begging for money from other people. They're not getting it from that community. Okay. They're basically not. And that's just the truth. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that. I wanted to say to um, Kelly I am so happy that you got out of there. I am so sorry that it took you 14 years. But beautiful woman, please understand this. It Don't put yourself down for something. Don't call yourself stupid for staying for so long. Don't feel like you are just this person that just got victimized and dogged out or that you're just so dumb for doing it. Because what we do need to realize is... This is a true, true statement from L. Ron Hubbard. All of your actions are naturally right. So if all of your actions are naturally right, then how could you feel bad for anything that you've done or any choice that you've made? You know, that's the truth. So you went through that experience so that you could come and be here and tell your story and save some other people who may be stuck in there. You know, you had to you can tell somebody, hey, this is dangerous. Don't go in there. If you've never been there, that's ridiculous. But you can save someone. You can give them some valid data. If you've actually been through the experience, you know what they're going to do. You know what's going on. You see what I'm saying? So don't ever feel bad about it. We love the fact that you spoke up and that you got away and that you're free and you're living. You got a new husband. You have financial stability, which is what we all want. You are free, girl. OK, you are totally free, Kelly. And we love you. And we do. And we appreciate you speaking out. OK, so 
everybody i think i need y'all to come on in and get up on the tip of the rock because at the tip of the rock did you know that there was freedom and let me tell you how to get there the best way to get there is love all right check me out later i got some more videos for you guys go ahead and subscribe to this you know you want to hey